Sorry for the late start. Um, Diane Leeds uh, with San Francisco Peninsula People Power, co-chair of the VIOC. Um, and for a portion of the meeting, uh, Petra Silton from Thrive will also kind of be co-leading. And then Yahira will come on a little bit later to talk about the toolkit. So welcome, everybody. Um, so essentially what we're going to start today is if we could, since there's not a, a ton of us, um, if we can go around, we can popcorn around the the meeting and the question for today is what question do you have about the March primary election? I figured since we have folks in the elections office here, this would be a good opportunity to bring up that question. So if you could just state what organization you're with, um, what your question is about the primary election. And also um, if you have an upcoming event that you would like assistance from any of the other participants here or anybody else who usually comes to the VIOC, that would be great. So again, I've already introduced myself. Um, I am gonna just jump over right to Sarah O'Brien from the elections division. <laughs> Thank you from the elections office. And I think I know most of you, um, good to see you. And uh, my question for the primary is how many people are gonna vote? <laughs> we don't know. Okay, so, pick some, yeah, pick someone else to, to keep this going. I'll go for Glenn. Hi, everyone. My name's Glenn Olson. I'm with the Immigration Institute of the Bay Area. And I guess uh, my question is, what's the best way people are finding to get people excited to vote in the primary? Good question. And I'll pass it off to... Um, Let's go with Lillian. Uh, hello. Hi, uh, Second Harvest of uh, Silicon Valley. And actually, I have a question for Sarah. Uh, do you know when the county is going to start sending the um, mail-in ballots? I know that on the schedule, you have that the, all the ballots need to be sent by <laughs> uh, February 5th. I think, yeah, but um, do you have like the exact day when the county is gonna start sending out the ballots? We usually mail them on the deadline, which is February 5th, oh, 20, okay. 29 days before, but it's it'll come very close. Sometimes we find out from the printer uh, that they can get there a few days early, um, but we can't promise that yet. So, okay. so, if, so um. If people could just state your questions, I'm writing them down, and this I'll make sure that Sarah answers them during her portion of the of the meeting. Okay. Um. Yeah. Good we, question. <laughs> okay. And about the events, well, we are gonna be doing some in reach events in our organization and our all staff meeting. We're gonna have we already have our our warehouses and flat TV screens, information about boring and also um uh working with Sarah <laughs> to get uh people from the uh San Mateo County uh election office to do some tabling events and food set distribution so to so people can get registered to vote. So that's coming soon. When we have the dates we'll share it with you. And that's it. I'll pass it to Chantel. Awesome. Well, nice seeing everyone. I'm Chantel Gonzalez, Election Specialist Supervisor here in San Mateo County. And I do not have any questions right now, but I will be helping Sarah respond to all of your questions. <laughs> and I'll pass it to Pam. Uh, good morning and thank you. Um, my question is, what is going to be on the ballot? Because that is going to help people, uh, help us to um, encourage people to vote. And I'm specifically looking at if there's any, you know, measures, ballot measures. And I'm going to pass this on to uh, Joanne. Good morning, everyone. I'm Joanne. Um, from Puente, I'm the community organizer. Um, my question um, is actually wondering if if this group will have some information for um, Proposition 1 um, before, I know that we're going to have like, I think we talked about having um, 
information like an informational pamphlet for everything that's going to be on the November 5th ballot but I'm not sure about that uh proposition one um just because as I'm reading both sides of it I'd like some more feedback okay. um and I'll pass it over to Cassidy hi everyone nice to meet you feel free to call me Chaz um I mainly just came to learn um but I'm excited to be here and look forward to hearing answers to some of these questions. Um, May, have you gone yet? Can I pass it over? Sure, thank you. I'm Mai, I use she, her pronouns. I'm a community health planner with San Mateo County Health. And um, I just wanna know more about what's on the ballot for March. Um, I know that there's the primaries for the uh president and the governorship but i don't know if there's anything else on it so i feel like i should know these basic facts donna can you go next yes my name is donna rutherford and um i'm on the clubhouse board but i also am representing the National Council of Negro Women. And uh, my question is, as a, I applied for a poll worker position and I did the application and got a survey, but I didn't get an interview uh, date. So I'm wondering when that is going to happen. Then my, my question, the other, well, that was a statement. My, my question is, uh kind of similar to Glenn. How do we excite uh folks to get out and vote and 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 know that this is really crucial? All elections are crucial, but this one is very unique. So how do we do that? And uh the NCNW will be having a um uh, event in Oakland on January 14th. We'll host a Let's Go Vote, and it's going to be an education forum. And we have a flyer, and it's um, on January 14th next year uh, at 1 p.m. That's a Sunday. Um, I could share the flyer at some point um, with those who are interested. And it's going to be virtual and in person at the um, Oakland Library. Thank Jim. you. Jim, can you go next? Hopefully you can hear me. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Jim Rosari here. You know, the primary uh, question that I have is, how can we assist you? Uh, the elections office has a lot of resources um, and uh, we're here to allocate those. Uh, we're their best utilized and especially you know we have the VIOC here who assists in that process and we're working with community-based organizations to reach targeted communities but really how can we assist and we'll answer some of the questions that you raised here uh, you know throughout the course of this meeting but that's our primary purpose here is to ensure that voters get registered and that they can efficiently vote on a red on on election day Rebecca We gonna go next, Rebecca Luna. I see it in the chat, Diane. Oh, okay. Rebecca says, hello, my name is Rebecca and I'm an elections extra help worker. I'm excited to learn more and I do not have any questions. It is possible she doesn't have a mic. I know she doesn't have video, but you know, we're it's like her third day. Oh, okay. Well, welcome Rebecca. Um, Linda, how about you? I'm don't know which it, Linda, I'm guessing which oh, one it might be. Lynn, it's Linda Wolin. Hi. Huh? Good, Hi, good morning, everyone. Linda Wolin. I'm chief of staff to Supervisor Dave Pine, who's president of the San Mateo County Board of Supervisors. And I apologize. I'm no video this morning and I might be in and out of the meeting to take a phone call. Um, but I am, uh, I'll echo what Jim said, and I'm here to help and looking to see how the board might be helpful. Thank you. Jack. 
Um, hey everyone, good morning. Oh, I didn't realize my video was off. Uh, good morning. Um, Jack Morning, I'm the Senior Director for Community Action at Silicon Valley Community Foundation. Um, so we are partnering with the county to uh, lead a grant program that I think many of you uh, applied to and I can provide an update on later today. <clears throat> um, but I share a lot of the questions that you all elevated, particularly I think Glenn's question about how do we figure out how to excite voters ahead of this election and um, excited to hear the discussion today. <clears throat> Mike Levinson, I, I'm assuming you're the one on the phone. Yes, um, I'm Mike Levinson with the San Mateo County VAC. And uh, I guess my uh, question would be what people can do to get out vote particularly uh, young people and non-english speaking people it just seems like there's a big gap in terms of the turnout for those groups great thank you bill bill you want to give us uh, an introduction of yourself there you are you're still on mute Now I'm unmuted. There you go. Okay. Um, yeah, good morning. I don't, I, um, I came in a little late. Could you just tell me real quick, Diane, uh, what you're asking us? Sure, just introduce yourself and what organization you're with. And then if, there, if you have a question about the primary election. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of involved in a couple of things. Uh, mostly for voter registration. I'm working right now with the uh, League of Women Voters, uh, Southern San Mateo County. I'm also like you, a member of People Peninsula Power. And you you know that I've worked with you for a number of years on voter registration and get out the vote in San Mateo County. Um, so I guess what I get my question would be, I don't know if it's to you, Diane, or anybody else. What do you got? What do you guys see as different and unique if that even possible about our upcoming election this time. I know it's in March, which I find curious. Maybe Mr. Isneri or somebody knows why, because the last time the primary was in June, I believe. So we moved it up for three months, and I'm not real clear on why we did that. It sort of has compressed the amount of time there is before people vote. So thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Carmen? Carmen, are you there? I'm here. I'm trying to get myself unmuted. I have, let me get the camera going just to say okay. hello. Good, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Carmen Torres and I'm uh, from Siren and we're an immigrant rights organization uh, that we serve the immigrant community of the Bay Area and in Fresno. And the reason that I'm here, I don't really have any questions or maybe I have too many, but I just want to learn about how to get our community engaged for the election, especially as the gentleman just said that it's been moved up till March so that we can better effectively do our job in getting them registered and voted, voting. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Carmen. Hey, hi, Russ, since you're here, <laughs> do you have a question? And uh, introduce yourself, please. Of course, thank you, Diane. Um, hi, everyone, my name is Yahaira Ortega and I work with Thrive Alliance. Uh, we co-facilitate co this this space. Welcome to you all. There's some new faces here, so excited to have you. Um, I don't have any questions for the primary elections at the moment. I'm just excited to to be of service to you all, uh, and um, hopefully you get a sense for everyone else in the room and um, create those partnerships and collaboration opportunities. Um, and I, I don't know oh, who has not gone, but I know that Erica just came in. Diana, yes, if I pass it over to Erica. Erica, um, you all we're doing is introducing ourselves, and then if we have a question for the March primary, um, you can ask that as part of the icebreaker. Awesome, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Erica. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the program manager at the Youth Leadership Institute San Mateo office. I currently have no questions right now, but just really eager to just be here in this um, space. My first time in this meeting, so um, nice to meet you all. Welcome, Erica. And Petra, you want to kind of close us off? 
I will I will close this off. Um, I am Petra Silton. I'm the Senior Director of Programs for Thrive, and we are so happy to see so many of you here. Um, my one of kind of a question is we really want everyone to come to candidate forums because we think that's a way to get people excited. So we are going to be hosting those and we will have simultaneous translation into, sorry, interpretation into Spanish as well. And so I think the question is how everybody else can be excited about the, um, about the candidate forum. So we have, we'll have on uh, January 30th, I'm gonna do my commercial now, so it's done. Um, uh, we'll have uh, district four, on February 5th, we're going to be doing one in conjunction with Silicon Valley Community Foundation's Choose Children campaign, and that'll be for all of the uh, supervisors in all three races. Um, they've all been invited, and that'll be really just a very tight focus on children and families, and there will be, in, in addition to interpretation for that one, there'll also be a child care. And then we will do a third one, and the date is yet to be decided on um, for the congressional race um, that takes that is covering the the coast part of San Mateo County. Um, and in we're hoping again that this is a way to get people involved because it's hard for people to get excited if they don't really have the information. It's another way to get a lot of information. They'll also be recorded. Um, so uh, my question is like, how do we all coordinate to get a lot of outreach about that, to get a lot of excitement around the, the forums? I'm sorry, Petro, what was the second date you gave? You gave January 30th, what's your first date for supervisor four? And January the 30th date? is for district four and February 5th is for the choose children one that it, that will be for all supervisors. In, in San Mateo County? Yeah, supervisor races. Okay. Okay, great. So did, did did I miss anybody? If not, I'm, I'll turn it over to Jimmy Rosari to start and then Sarah, or, or Sarah, do you want to start first? I'll always let Jim go first. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, and it's a pleasure to be here uh, with everyone today. Yes, it is a very, very busy election season for us right now. Uh, we're preparing for the uh, March primary election, uh, which is a presidential election. And uh, to answer the question, why is it in March? Uh, well, in the infinite wisdom of the state legislature several years ago, and, and I'm not saying this facetiously, I'm just basically saying that it, there's, there's good points and bad points regarding the March election. Uh, March was selected so California can get into uh, the primary season with Super Tuesday, uh, where a majority of the states in the nation are voting. They're holding their primaries. California, when if you hold it in June, uh, while the good side is it gives us more time to prepare and it's more uh, a traditional, um, it is after really a lot of the decisions have been made by the voters nationally uh, in the primary elections. So it diminishes California's status nationally. Uh, with respect to our primaries as they relate to all of the political parties. So uh, in presidential years and for the presidential primary, uh, it is held in March. Uh, and it does add a lot of challenges to us because there's a real crunch time, uh, not only to get the election going, and, and also a lot of people like we're hearing right now are confused. Why in March? Um, and it's, it's an off type of season um, election. So that's one of the challenges. Uh, we are doing everything possible to encourage people to get out to vote. We can talk a little bit more about some of the programs that we have, but that's the primary thrust. And then, of course, uh, we're all in preparation for the November general election, which is an absolutely uh, huge election that is coming down the line here. And uh, that election will probably be in terms of numbers, uh, one of the largest, if not the largest percentage-wise uh, and numbers-wise of voters that will uh, come out to the polls. Um, in San Mateo County, we've done a lot to encourage voter participation. I would say the first and foremost is that we were a model county in the state of California. We were the leader in all mail ballot elections. We were the first county in the state of California 
to hold a countywide all mail ballot election. And we did that in 2015. Uh, with that, we had, uh, excuse me, with that, you know, in 2015, we, we had a very successful election. And shortly thereafter, the passage of the Voters Choice Act occurred. And in many respects, it occurred because of the success of the 2015 all mail ballot election in San Mateo County. Uh, at that point in time, there was only five counties that participated in the Voters' Choice Act. Less than 10% of the people, voters in the state of California were voting by mail. Uh, and a few years after, and even now, you'll see over 50% of California voters are now voting by mail. And with recent legislative changes, 100% will be voting. They're not all Voters' Choice Act counties. The San Mateo County took the leadership to make voting easy and convenient. And how do we make it vote easy and convenient? Well, first of all, is every registered voter gets a ballot in the mail. And you'll get that 29 days before the election. Second of all, is our election model, our infrastructure. We moved from a traditional precinct uh, environment, a precinct model, uh, where we had 205 precincts, and you can only vote in those precinct polling places at that time, to a vote center model. Uh, where this election, will we will have somewhere in the neighborhood of around 45 vote centers, 46 vote centers, 49 total, if you take into consideration our mobile vote centers uh, and our pop-up vote centers, which again, open, three of them open 30 days before the election uh, in North Central and South County. And then the other vote centers start opening 10 and four days before the election. Vote centers are there primarily to assist voters with any questions and to understand the process. By far and away, the preferred method of voting in San Mateo County is by mail. Uh, we'll see 94, 95, 96% of the ballots cast are vote by mail ballots. So those ballots will be in the hands of the voters, as we mentioned, we'll start mailing them 29 days before the election. And uh, we will accept them all the way through election day uh, midnight, and then seven days thereafter. So we've got E plus seven, uh, but it has to be postmarked on election day at midnight. Um, so the, the process is one that's very inclusive. Part of it is our voter education and outreach program, of which the VIOC was established uh, under the direction of our uh, registrar voters, Mark Church, uh, and the board. Uh, but this is a uh, uh, an appointed board uh, for the purpose solely of providing voter education and outreach to our voters. And it has been extremely successful. It too is also a model in the state of California. And a lot of folks call us and call many of our members to talk about how we've structured uh, the VIOC here. It is not a statutory committee uh, as required under the Voters' Choice Act. The two statutory committees that we have under the Voters' Choice Act for voter education and outreach are the uh, the, the VAC, which is the Voter uh, Advisory Assistance Advisory Committee, and we also have the LAC, uh, the Language uh, Assistance Advisory Committee. Those are required under the law, under the Voters' Choice Act, but the VIOC is one that's a local uh, creation by San Mateo County, and it's been extremely successful. And some of the programs that we're very proud of, uh, we have representatives here today working with the Silicon Valley Foundation and community-based organizations. We are using trusted messengers to go out into the communities uh, to make sure that they understand the process. Uh, we walk a fine line in elections between uh, encouraging people and, and informing people about the and voters about election. Getting the vote out is really more of a political term, you know, that campaigns use. And so we have to make sure that, you know, uh, our effort is solely to educate and to encourage voters to register and to encourage voters to vote, not for any particular uh, party, candidate, proposition. Uh, we're nonpartisan in the election, but yet we take an active role in making sure that we get uh, everyone uh, to vote. A couple of just real highlights, and then I'll turn it over because we have some questions that were asked about the measures, et cetera. And I know Chantel's probably pulled it off of our website here and be able to share a little bit of that with you. Um, but recently, what we've got going right now is with this presidential primary, we have uh, 
non-party preference voters, which are voters that have not um, selected a political party and their non-party non preference. And then we have the political parties and they're holding uh, their uh, primaries for ele election for their uh, particular candidates. And uh, we've sent out notices to explain the process on how non-party preference voters can participate in the process. Uh, we basically have, um, you know, the the Democratic Party and the Green Party allow non-party preference voters to participate in their election, uh, and but the Republican Party does not. So, if you want to wish, if you want to vote in the Republican Party primary, you have to actually change your party uh, preference to Republican. The other ones allow NPP voters to actually. Uh, fill out a card and let us know, and they will be able to participate in those other party primaries. This uh, notice is going out. In fact, some of it, I believe, some cards have already gone out. Um, but that is to explain the process. It's a little complicated, so we anticipate, uh, you know, we will get a lot of questions on that, um, as we normally do in every year that we have an NPP uh, situation. But um, with these cards, we're getting out in front of the curve to let people know and how they can um, participate in the election. And then, you know, finally, again, you know, we have the, our, our election model where we have drop box locations. Um, and so, you know, voting is easy. You mail it, drop it off at a drop box, drop it off at uh, one of our vote centers, uh, and you have all the way through election day to do that. Um, there are other challenges with which we can talk about maybe in another meeting. You know, what are the challenges we see coming on down the line? And in a nutshell, um, it's mis and disinformation and activities that are occurring at the cyber level and occurring at the physical level uh, that pose a, seriously, a concern to election workers and our operations. Uh, there's a lot of threats out there. Uh, we're really at the front line of that. We're actively involved with the Department of Homeland Security, with our ISD, uh, and with law enforcement and the FBI to monitor all of that activity that's coming on down the line. And uh, we anticipate we will see a very heightened level of uh, mis- and disinformation, particularly with the advent of uh, artificial intelligence. So that we can spend some time on down the line. That just gives you an overview of uh, what we're doing here at the elections office. And maybe Chantal, you can talk a little bit about what measures are uh, on, uh, on the ballot, people. Of course, uh, I will be sharing my screen. Maybe can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Awesome, thank you. So this is our website. Um, and I can walk you through the website if you need help. So just let me know. Uh, this is under the current election. You can see the calendar, uh, register to vote, and any of the election information, including the crossover ballot application. And that is what um, Mr. Yasari was talking about uh, related to the NPP voters. Um, following that, we do have the Canada Guide, the roster of candidates, which is updated daily. And um, following for that, we have the measures. Currently, we have four school district measures and one county measure. Um, regarding the question about Proposition 1, Proposition 1 is a state measure, and that will be in the March 2024 ballot. Um, so yeah, if you go to our website, you can click at any of those measures and see uh, the full text that you can review. Everything is public information. Um, and as, as I mentioned, these are some of the offices that will be uh, appearing in our ballot for March 2024. This is our candidate guide. It is also available here on this site. And as you can see, I, I believe all of you can see my screen. So these are the current offices that will be on your ballot. Um, let me just go a little bit. As of um, last night, we had 114 candidates filed, and that's still ongoing until December 8. That's our last day of filing. So just something to keep in mind. Um, and yeah, so let me know if you have any questions. 
Chantel, I'm, this is Diane. So I'm assuming the information about Proposition 1, since it's a statewide ballot, will not be on the county site? Will you have no. to go to the Secretary of State or will you have yeah. that on? We do that. What we can do is we can add a link to the Secretary of State's um, site if you if that would be helpful. I can work on that today so we can get that going and you guys have access to that information. Um, but yeah, it would be a link to the Secretary of State. Um, and I do have some information on it, just a little bit where I just using uh, Valopedia, but I will um, make sure we use the Secretary of State's link. Okay. Yeah, that'd be because we're really trying to get people to memorize just one uh, link to go to, which I guess now yes. is is smcvote.gov, no longer .org. Yes. Um, and then hopefully people can go to that one site and get all the information they need about the March primary in one spot. Yeah, that is actually that. That's a great point. Uh, so yeah, I will be working on that update. Yes. I'm sorry, Diane. What was that link? smcvote.gov is the new because uh, they've, they've gotten the, the .gov extension but smcvote.org will still work uh, I'm right right yes. uh yes yeah, Sarah, yeah, yes it links <laughs> directly to it um and and yes if you go for example if you go to smc vote you can now go to election and candidate information you click on this and then you will automatically go to this, uh, the March 2024 election and all the information that we need. So here's where I will be adding the link to the SOS for Proposition 1. And you can see from the election calendar to the crossover ballot and all the information regarding the parties that are allowing crossover and, the, and what to do with the parties that are not allowing crossover. Um, also, the, as I mentioned, the Canada Guide that is updated daily uh, from the the roster, I mean the roster that's updated daily, and the candidate guide that we update, um, and the measures for now. Once we do the um, random alphabetize um, of selection, then we are going to be adding the name, the full names for the measures. So, so Sarah, there, 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 someone was asking. Hang on a second. Um, so there was a question in the chat about whether there will be a QR code that 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 has the link to the website on. And, and I'm assuming that's what's going to you're going to start printing on all the, the materials. Again, this is a question probably for Sarah. And let's see. You're, you're muted, on, Sarah. Yeah. Once uh, Jim and Chantal are done, I. I'll show you pictures of all the materials with the QR codes. Right. Any other questions for Chantal or anything else that you, you need to cover for us? Yeah, I wasn't clear on why. I think, I, Diane, you said it or she just said it, that SM, or I'm sorry, Prop 1 is not on the ballot. Is that what you said or what did you say? No, I was just asking about access to information about Proposition 1, whether that would be on the county website. And we've just heard that, yes, there will be a link put on the county website to the Secretary of State's website, since it's a statewide proposition. OK. OK. Thank you. Sure. I guess at the last thing I just wanted to add, just for information, is um, the, you know, we are expecting to have 49 vote centers and 56 drop boxes official ballot drop boxes. That includes uh, 14 of those will be indoor drop boxes and 46 will be outdoor drop boxes. So just a little bit more information has been updated. And yeah, I'll move on to Sarah. Go for it. Great. Thank you. I know a lot of you do uh, voter registration. So I want to mention a couple things important uh, to keep in mind, at least I to. I think it might be something you want to keep in mind. Uh, let's see here, my little notes. If you're registering people and they're registering as no party preference, uh, let them know they need to pick a ballot if they want presidential candidates. Otherwise, they get a nonpartisan, <clears throat> excuse me, a nonpartisan ballot. Um, they can register and then go to our website to get the crossover ballot form. You might want to have the crossover ballot form with you um, if you're registering people. So I wanted to mention that. Um, 
people, there are only certain parties that allow you to cross over. <clears throat> so you need to re-register if you want to vote for presidential candidates in other parties, such as the Republican Party. Uh, <clears throat> and again, all that info is available online. I'll try coffee here. <clears throat> And <clears throat> districts with Board of Supervisor races, yeah, unlike the state and federal contest, those Board of Supervisors may be elected during the primary uh, if they get, if one of the candidates gets 50% plus one vote. So that's something important. To, it doesn't work that way for president. It doesn't work that way for any other offices other than county offices. And on registering, I want to mention, try to get people to fill out the optional information, at least two things. One is to include either an email or a phone number um, so our office can reach you if you, there's like a problem on your signature or something. We get things without signatures at times, so we want to be able to reach you more quickly than the mail, though we'll double up if we have your phone number, we'll still mail something. Um, also in the optional information is language. People can select the language they want to receive their election materials. So I really want to encourage that people do that. They don't realize they can get things in other languages. And finally, people need to re-register if they move, change their name, or of course, if they want to change parties. So those are some of my registration tips. Um, now I'd like to share my screen and I'll show you some of the materials that we're working with. Let's see, now share, let's see here. Hopefully you are seeing the no party preference uh, postcard, well, form that went out in the mail. It's not really a postcard because it was a fold over. This is what Jim was talking about. It began mailing November 17th. Um, here's where we had the address on the first corner. Um, then inside it explains about choices people have um, as non-party preference voters, which we had what approximately 104,000 people are no party preference. So that's about a quarter of our voters here. Um, they could fold this, they fill out the crossover ballot app if they want to vote on a presidential race and fold this over, put a piece of tape, and they can mail it back to us on our dime here. Let's see. Will my screen change easily? There we go. Uh, we also started around Thanksgiving a register to vote postcard mailing, and that too went out to about 100,000 households. Uh, the households were mainly Daly City area and East Palo Alto, Redwood City, Menlo Park areas. Um, it had the information about registering to vote uh, in five different languages. Um, it goes to households. It doesn't go to particular individuals. It went out via the post office every day day direct mail. It's sort of like a Safeway ad. It doesn't go to someone specific. It goes in your mailbox if you're in that route that we selected. Um, also things in December, we sent out to the schools information about the student democracy program. And if any of you need any of these materials, of course, let, let us know. But here's one on student democracy program for high school students. Uh, right now, the things we have about the election include uh, bookmarks. They're larger than they used to be. They're about two inches across, eight inches down. And that has a lot to do with because we wanted to add info about if you're registered as a no party preference person. Um, so we we have our post, um, our bookmarks ready. Uh, we also have quarter sheets. These are about a quarter of a regular page, a little bit larger. Um, again, uh, several languages. Uh, it's a little different look than it used to be. Uh, again, to include info about no party preference. Um, whoops, went the wrong way there. Here we go. We also have flyers right now. Um, if you are working with people who might be on probation or parole, 
Um, we do have flyers about that and, uh, you know, their rights. We have unhoused voting information in several languages. Um, it's a two-sided half sheet, um, you know, helping people to understand what they need to do if they don't have an address. Um, we also have uh, flyers to uh, let people know about our jobs and our volunteer recruitment. So again, we can email you or we can uh, get you actual printouts. Um, for our vote centers, you know, we'll have some info about get ahead of the time that there'll be a vote center um, to have info about voting at that location. <clears throat> And uh, we're working on what I call VCA Postcard One, Voters' Choice Act Postcard One. It'll go out to all registered voters, um, giving the basics. Uh, there will be two versions, likely. We've done this before where the non no party preference people, again, they get a, a separate message at the bottom saying, you know, if you want to vote for a presidential candidate, you need to make a selection or change parties. Um, so the one that if you have a party, if you've registered, your postcard will be a little less dense. Um, we're working with the VAC on an accessible voting options uh, card. And soon we'll have our vote center Dropbox location flyers, working on our updating our animated videos also because we needed to get .gov and we also wanted to include the QR code. I um, wanted to mention a few things. It's a little blurrier, but uh, from the Secretary of State, some of the things we have are these, a guide to voting in California in several languages. A new citizen's guide to voting is one pamphlet with several languages in it. And a pre-register at 16 kind of card handout. Uh, let's see, all of those are things we have and we can get you more if we need. Um, the Secretary of State's office has recently done a quick fax and that's really helpful. I haven't, we haven't received it in a way to read it yet. That's just like a blurry art picture, um, but we're gonna get lots of those because I'm sure it'll be helpful. And they've made a voting rights restored parole poster um, and you can download that from their website, or we can get you copies. And I wanted to mention, if you have other interest, um, they will have the vote, or they do have currently on their website, uh, the Voter Bill of Rights, if that's something you'd like to get in different languages. They will be doing a social media toolkit um, January. And finally, uh, the Secretary of State uh, their office will be doing two public meetings, uh, Zoom meetings in January. Uh, one is supposed to be about the lifestyle of the ballot is what they called it. Um, and let me see if I remember I had it. Okay, voting rights. And last thing, if I see it, model. Well, I don't have it in front of me. The Secretary of State's office has also been doing a student vote project with community colleges. And one of our staff members, Kip Britton, he's uh, been working on it with CSM, Skyline, Kenyatta, and Menlo. Uh, Notre Dame Day Namur uh, doesn't have a student government. Um, they're a little, uh, they're not as many students there any longer. So that's unfortunate. Uh, but we do have a vote center on their campus, so uh, they'll get the word out. Uh, and uh, besides that, um, Secretary of State's office has a VCA ambassadors program. Um, really, we don't need them in our county because you're all our VCA ambassadors, but you're welcome to sign up on the SOS website because uh, they'll mail you some T-shirts and some coffee cups, they said. Um Let's see. Last thing is that they, um, it they've rebranded a program they have, uh, for businesses. It was called, uh, let me see, democracy. Oof. Let's see. I'm sorry, we just had this meeting yesterday. Um, so 
they've rebranded it. It had been something about businesses and democracy. And now it's going to be a different name and they'll try to get businesses involved with um, allowing registration, whether it be a table or make sure they have voting registration forms at their sites. That I think is finally, let's see, that's it from me. I'll stop sharing there. There we go. That is incredible. Thank you so much, Sarah, for for sure. sharing all that information. I'm just curious about the business and, and democracy program. Are you all working with uh, like the Renaissance Center and other partners who work with entrepreneurs and businesses, local businesses? Uh I'll have to ask, that's the Secretary of State's office doing that program. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, but they'll appreciate any, you know, leads. Okay. I'll Great. talk to you later. Okay. Well, before you go, Sarah, um, there, there. I know you had a question for me regarding what additional languages uh, would be helpful to have in terms of doing voter outreach. And I suggested talking to the folks that are actually doing the voter outreach. So based on what you've seen so far, if, if you have any other ideas in terms of what other languages would be helpful in your communities, um, you can either, you know, you can either put them in the chat or send an email to, to Sarah. Um, and so that you can see whether or not that's something that the county can do. Let's see, I think Bill has his hand up. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm, uh, um, Sarah, all the stuff you just put up, um, I think you said we can go to smc.org, uh, did you say? But and we can access any of the stuff you just put up on the screen. We can access that um, at the site and download it. It'll come out better if you pick up the prints we have in our office, but if you'd like okay, to download so Okay, so that was... <laughs> Okay, so that was my alternative question. If we can't do that, how um, how soon can we access any of this? And I guess we have to go directly out to Tower Road. And do we need to like email you or something in advance so you know uh, we're coming to pick things up? I mean, what's the procedure for picking stuff up? People just show up, but if you want to have it work so you walk in and walk out, um, give me a call, email me, um, something like that ahead of time, and we'll have your material waiting for you at the counter. Um, okay. Could you put your contact information in the chat, please? Sure. I'll do that. And uh, yes, there will be on the current election page. Um, I've spoken to our graphic artist, and we've always put at the bottom of the page a voter outreach toolkit that lets you see all those things and print them if you'd like to. Okay, and you have everything in mass quantities right now, like if we need a bunch. About how many? I don't know. I'm I'm going <laughs> to, you know, for, for stuff I need to pass out, it probably at least 50 to 100. We could do that. The catch I had is I sent out an email to many people who've been to the VIOC meetings just asking if there's any hint of what you want. And I think I got two responses, so it was really hard to predict how many what quantity to print okay so, so for so for example we're going to be in the high schools i'm, I'm working sure. with the legal and voters we're going to be in the high schools in the next week and yeah. again in january and i can tell you we're going to easily need several hundred of the uh you can vote at six or you can register to vote at age 16 so we're going to need a lot of those i know for sure okay. and then and then probably some of the other i can't recall mm -hmm. everything you put up on the screen this morning but probably some of the other things you put up that are going to be relevant uh, to younger voters. Sure. Let's work offline on this. Oh, for sure. For sure. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Sarah. Any any other questions? So again, if, if you didn't see a language that you feel would be very useful to have uh, in doing your voter outreach, make sure you shoot an email to Sarah so that you can put it in and look at whether there's there's funds to do that because again I figure you you folks have the better idea as to what's needed to get to your communities. Okay, um, any other questions for the elections office and and Tom, I'm sorry I forgot to have you introduce yourself. So you want to do that right now? I, I realized I kind of missed you. Good morning. I I'm also election specialist supervisor 
working at uh, Tower Road with Chantel. Thanks, Tom. Sorry about the uh, oversight. So, uh, Yahira, um, if there's are if there's any other questions, let me know. Um, I don't see any other hands raised, um, so I'm going to pass it over to Yahira to talk about the election toolkit. We're actually going to switch some items around, uh, Diane. In okay. This let's go with the voter outreach grant so folks get i'm looking at the time okay make sure that we we gather that feedback um and then we make some time for any like announcements on future like bill just mentioned he's going to the high schools with the league of women voters other people might be going to the high school so if you want to team up figure out what high schools you're targeting like We'll, we'll have some time for that. So um, let's move over to voter outreach grants update. So let's start with an update from, from Jack and he can set the stage for us um, in terms of what happened last month, what was available, what is any updates that you have for, for the folks here? Yeah, <clears throat> thanks Yara. Um, so just to catch everyone up, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you're all aware, but we have partnered with the county. This is the sixth election that we've actually done this partnership. And so it's, it's uh, I think, a pretty good operation at this point um, uh, that we have with the, the county department of elections. But um, the way that it works is that the county sets aside some of its voter education outreach budget and then enters into a contract with Silicon Valley Community Foundation for us to distribute the funding out to nonprofit organizations. And so many of you saw, and in fact, many of you applied to the RFP that we opened last month um, and closed last month uh, as well on the 21st. And thank you to all of you that did submit an application. We realized it was a tight uh, window to apply and, and really appreciate uh, your willingness and readiness to submit that application. Uh, we did receive 18 applications and um, the, the total sought was about $325,000. Um, and we're close to being able to let folks know how much you'll be getting of the application that you submitted. <laughs> um, we have not just the county's funding this time, but SVCF has also contributed some of its resources and we've been able to raise additional funding. Um, so we have more than the county uh, has given us for the first time, actually, which is great. Um, but we'll be able to let folks know uh, exactly what you're getting. Um, pretty soon, uh, hopefully in the next week or so, we're, we're trying to get the final dollars ac across the finish line into our account so that we can immediately turn it around and get it back out to you. Uh, if you did apply uh, for a grant, um, you will be asked to sign a grant agreement, um, and that will go to the email that we have on file. So if you applied for a grant, just please be aware that you'll have to actually sign a grant agreement. It won't be in a, a grant award letter. Um, because there are conditions that you'll need to adhere to. And we'll we'll go over this in greater detail. Um, uh, but these funds have specific restrictions on them that go kind of above and beyond what a typical grant from the community foundation uh, has because these are public dollars. Um, and we want to be ensure that they're being spent responsibly. Um, we're tentatively holding uh, November 4th. Um, at 10 a.m. As, as, a, as a kickoff meeting for the organizations that received funding from uh, from this pot. If you're unable to... You just uh, said November 4th. Jack. Oh, okay. You're probably not. We're not holding that, November but... 4th. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, January 4th. Thank you, Petra and Diane for immediately correcting me. January 4th, that's a Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, for a Zoom meeting. Um, and so we're, we uh, discussed that and are holding that as a time with the county um, to try to do it after the Christmas and New Year holiday, um, recognizing not everyone's back that week. Uh, you know, we will record that session. Um, we might move it back another week. But please, if you did apply for funding, hold that time. Again, that's Thursday, uh, January 4th. Uh, at uh, 10 in the morning, and we will follow up once we've uh, been able to put the grants out uh, to you all, and uh, we'll make sure that that's held on everyone's calendar. And that meeting will really be about sharing, uh, you know, kind of deepening the discussion that we're having here today, uh, trying to find out what the outreach is, what the events are, where there's overlap, where there are gaps between the, the groups that are being funded. Um, and and really ensuring that everyone is kind of aware of the deadlines and procedures as we head towards the election. Um, I'll stop there. I know it's a lot of information, um, but if there's any questions uh, anyone might have. 
so, so I had a question. So, so Jack, you said you had 18 applications. Are you going to be able to fund all of them to some extent? Not all of them, but, um, you know, a, a substantial amount, I can say that, um, you know, where I think looking to fund most of them, um, definitely more than half, maybe as much as three quarters, if not more. So if you submitted an application, we're, we're very much trying to include all organizations that submitted a, an application that checked our boxes. You know, we really were looking to see if an organization had an existing presence in San Mateo County. Um, and, uh, you know, nearly everyone met that. And so, and we're reaching out to the precincts, uh, you know, where there's there's a, a history of um, participation, voter participation that's lower than the, the countywide average. Um, and most of the organizations, I'm pleased to say, met that basic criteria, you know, have a presence in the county and, were, and had a specific plan to target the right areas and right populations. Well, thank you, Silicon Valley Community Foundation for the additional monies, because um, I'm sure that that means that just more, more organizations can do voter outreach. I'm just curious, um, anybody here on the Zoom call, um, if you if you applied for the grant, you could just raise your hands. So the... Okay, so I don't see it. Okay, you can use the Zoom settings as well. Yeah, I can't. I can't tell on my screen who what the total number is. I yeah. don't know if you could, Yahira. Um, it's easier when they put their hand on the Zoom. Oh, and okay. It's a feature. If you scroll down to reactions, the the raise hand option is there. Okay. There we go. It's, yeah, it's quite. I can say, Diane, just looking at the list of folks here, it's 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 a lot of overlap um, between the VIAC. Well, that's good. So it's a good reason to be part of the VIOC. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Very helpful. Um, and thank you all for participating. The the the, the reason that we want to ask is um, generally we we know that there's some some uh, folks here who have applied in the past, and there's some folks that that haven't, right? And this this may be their first year. And um, I'll leave it up to you, Diane. I'm sure you have a question. We'll, about, we'll go ahead. You can you just continue with Yahira. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm I'm hoping to just gather uh, some feedback about like how was the application process. I I'm I don't think Jack covered this, but this was a little new. This is this is a new process for for this application process. Um and and folks that have done it in the past in previous years it looks a little different compared to that. So we want to hear from you. Um, and being that most of you applied, we want to know how was that application process? We have Jack and, and the elections office on the call. So we're, we're um, trying to create a space where we can have as much feedback and um, maybe there's some things that they can, um, you know, just change for, for the next election. So um, I don't know if, Lilium has her hand up for any comments, but it. I'm yeah no oh, I'm gonna lower my hand uh, uh no just I'm it was Rachel Monaco my manager who actually um like filled out the application for the grant so I don't have, but I could ask her and maybe share with you that later. Yes yes I I I would love to hear hear and I I'm sure Jack and the elections office would love to hear about it. We'll pass along any information. You all should have my email, um, but if you don't, then I will also put it in the chat. Betsy, yes, you're you're somebody who has applied in the past and yeah. applied this year. Would love to hear from you. Yes, um, I it was Jeff Ryder that actually did the application, and um, so I wasn't directly involved with it. But part of the issue was the time constraint, so it would be really nice to have a little more time. Uh, you know, Jeff was traveling and we, we had to kind of scramble to um, pull it all together. If we hadn't done it before, I think it would have been very difficult to do in that short of a time window. But, you know, he was able to understand, you know, what you were expecting and, and how to how to go through it all. Um, so I, I think things are working out OK now, but it was a, a sort of a scramble. So I'm just curious, is anybody on the call today, was it their, your first time or your organization's first time applying for a grant? If you could use the reaction and raise your hand. You see. 
I don't see any. Do you, Yahira? I think Carmen, yeah. it was her first time maybe applying. I see one hand, Carmen, yes. Oh, Carmen, okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I didn't actually do the application, but what I did was the proposal part, the plan of what we had to do. And um, he, my, my, my director did the rest of it. But um, to me, it was fast. Uh, I will say that um, I happen to work really well. I mean, we did we did it like quick, like in a day. Um, but uh, maybe I know for other folks, it might it might be a little more daunting if they only have a very short time. But for us, we were able to get it with with uh, not a lot of difficulty. One thing um, we do, I should also say thank you for if you do have any uh, uh, feedback constructive feedback that you want to email me directly we are this is a new system for us and so just to second what Diana is saying we are very much looking for anything any changes that we can make anything that might be easier um, to it and next time we do so for the November primary we do plan to extend the time period at least to a couple more weeks. Um, and try to off, uh, open office hours as well um, so that uh, we could, which is something we weren't able to do this time, unfortunately, uh, because of some staff constraints. But we're looking forward to doing that for the, the primary election. Um, should we mean the general? There? Yeah, sorry. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, need, I need a third copy today, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, one, one thing I also just completely, you know, separate to this, I do want to just share because I think you all are maybe interested in this is that we've actually been and Jim, Jim, Travis, uh, Don and I have been in conversation with folks from the Secretary of State's office and there is interest statewide at taking this model, the San Mateo model and expanding it to other counties. Um, really looking at what's been done here, you know, so there is a lot of um, interest at the state level about this and there should be some hearings maybe in the new year focused on on kind of the ins and outs of this model and, and taking the strengths here um, and getting other counties to engage in the way that San Mateo County has. Um, so I'll keep everyone appraised of those conversations as they develop. Um, and uh, I know folks would be interested to see this scale to other counties as well. And maybe there would be some more money from the Secretary of State's office as well. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Anything I have, that we need to cover, Yahira, on this topic? Yeah, one one last question, and then we can wrap it up. And, and thank you both, Jim and Jack, and the Elections Office for being here. Um, the, the question is around, I know that you're still working on timeline for the November election, but, um, and if you already have it all set out, we'd love to hear like possible dates that people can, can keep in mind um, when looking for preparing materials. And uh, of course you have the space in the future to come in and give us any updates. Um, so why don't you let us know where you are on the timeline if, if we have, if you have any dates for November in terms of like the the grants proposal that they, that folks have to prepare. Uh, right now, we are immersed uh, in the March primary process. We do have calendars that we develop, uh, and so they're very helpful. You can go online and you can see exactly what we're plotting out. Um, but all of those boxes have not been filled out for the November election. We know statutorily what the election. Uh, deadlines are for a variety of, of processes in an election, like you know, when you get the sample ballot out, E minus 88, and all, you know, all of the measures and everything have to be completed. But we don't have the actual calendars out for some, some of the areas that we're talking about here uh, with funding for the VI. Generally, it follows our budget cycle. So we are on a two-year budget cycle. We just funded this first year out of the 23-24 budget cycle. We're now entering the 24-25. That budget will be adopted uh, July 1 in, in the June 30th meeting. Uh, and so the monies that have been allocated then are the ones then that we will be able to start uh, allocating uh, to the program. So definitively, we don't have that budget adopted yet, even though we're in a two-year budget process. We've submitted our forecast, which is basically what we've done this year in terms of our budget expenditures. That's what we're proposing pretty much next year. Um, but that hasn't been formally approved until the adoption of the budget in June and July of 24. And that'll be for the 24-25. As soon as we do that, we'll keep you posted 
as to you know the timeline for talk. Yeah, that's helpful. Go ahead. That's it. That that that's helpful for us to keep in mind and also um, let folks know that you know we're, the purpose of VIOC is not only getting them involved in in this process, but also making sure that people are civically involved throughout everything. So if people know, okay, the budget cycle is coming up, the supervisors are looking at it, um, then then we can put that information out there. Okay, Diane, thank you. Yeah. So so basically, the last the last thing I wanted to say is I know we, we bring this up every time um, with the the way the budget year is kind of breaks in the middle of the summer. Is there any creative way or anything we that can be done to maybe get the monies out earlier? Because, you know, July is, is getting pretty close to November and I'm sure there's a lot of activities in the summertime. So if there's any creative way to um, either pre-fund activities or, or, or something that would, that would be something that would be wonderful. And I'm, I'm sure all the organizations would appreciate that as well. Uh, you know, we are fortunately or unfortunately locked into a budget cycle uh, that coincides with the county budget process. Um, on, that's the negative side. On the positive side, we have earmarked the same amount of funds for next year. So mm -hmm. this is uh, a, an indirect or a direct way of saying that what we got this year will we'll have next year. But it has to be formally adopted by the board in order for those expenditures to occur. And that's mm -hmm. by ordinance, by county charter. We're pretty much locked into that. But from a planning point of view, during our two-year budget process, we thought about next year. And uh, what we have here, and it's basically uh, what we have in all of our programs in our department, is a cost of living factor uh, that is allocated to our budget. So it's basically this year's expenditures plus a factor that are probably in the neighborhood around 2%. Uh, and so that's what we're looking at in terms of next year's allocation, which we can't spend until adopted by ordinance. But for planning purposes, I think you can pretty much go, uh, we can go on record right now that we've recommended uh, this funding level for next year. So, so, so possibly kind of the, the application process can start before the funding is, is, uh, has been voted on. Again, so, so that the organizations can start their planning, knowing or feeling relatively confident that the money will be coming just a little bit later than in the year. You know, it, it, again, I hate to commit <laughs> to funds that haven't been adopted by the Board of Supervisors. Uh, theoretically, it's in our two-year budget plan. Um, I'll have to check with our, you know, higher-ups to make sure that we can do something like that. But definitely by July 1, we'll know. And, uh, and we can start the process as quickly as possible. Just okay. want to make sure that we comply with the county ordinance and the county charter on, on the allocation. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah. Yahira, do you want to move into the toolkit? Yeah. yeah. Documents. OK. One second, I was just answering some questions on the chat. Yeah, because I'm <laughs> looking at the time. <laughs> yes, we are looking at the time. So thank you both, uh, Alexis Office. Thank you, Jack, for all the updates. I'm I'm sure that uh, feedback will trickle in. You put your email in the chat. And if um, I will, of course, folks can bring, bring some of that feedback. And generally, we also want to hear, um, like, how it was the general process for you. So any feedback is helpful. Um, let's move on to the toolkit. Let me pull up the toolkit. So um, Thrive Alliance in collaboration with a couple other folks with with the funding of SVCF and um, the Grove and others, um, we have been able to create a, an elections education toolkit. And what it is, is uh, basically folks on the call let me know that they're interested in receiving this toolkit. Um, and it's a it's a formal package that we hand deliver and um, it has a couple of materials in there. It has some materials that the elections office puts out in combination with um, um, some of the materials that we create internally to at Thrive. And I'm going to share my screen. And please note that this is still in the works. I have received some emails of folks saying that they want the toolkit. Um, we are working on the final version. So it 
it will be out soon. Um, and let me just share with folks because some folks don't haven't been on this call before and may not know. So you'll receive something like this. It's a it's a sticker that says the last day to vote is Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. I voted, did you? And then some folks work with gener younger generations. So they, they have a future voter sticker here. Um, we are still gathering feedback from our partners on, on this brochure, but every nonprofit that is interested in election toolkits will let me know that they want this trifold brochure and we can add your logo. Um, another suggestion that folks had was um, if they could personalize it and add some photos um, to the election toolkit of real life people in the community. And yes, I am open to that. You have real life photos of your community members doing some of these things. I don't know how you would get a photo of inside the <laughs> the voting the voting uh, centers, but if you have real life photos of people interacting around elections, let me know. I'd love to see them. I'd love to add them to the toolkit. It would be a fun twist to it. Um, and also, if you're part of the election toolkit, uh, I, I may have said this, but we add your logo and um, to the toolkit. So it's a co-branded effort so that when you're delivering it to your community members, um, it's an opportunity for them to know, um, for them to feel like this is coming from you, a trusted messenger. Um, and the the brochure covers like why it's important to vote. It has some information on the primary election um how people can vote what are the different ways which also needs to be updated um voting plan and the dates important dates a lot, some folks get you know there's sometimes confusion confusion um and not everyone has the same information about who can vote so everything you need is in this toolkit and it, it should be um pretty easy to understand and if you have any questions or any feedback for for this toolkit let me know i'm implementing that as we speak and and as you you can tell we are fans of qr codes so we have a ton of qr codes down below because we know that you're out there talking to community members and sometimes it's just as easy as scanning the qr code and maybe folks don't want to take a, a flyer so um and then last thing that i'll cover is um we usually have pledge cards for folks who are doing outreach before February 5th. And um, if folks want to commit to voting, these need to be updated, of course, but um, it, that's that's still available. All these materials are available in other languages. You just have to work with me and let me know in advance what, what kind of language you will need and, and how many. Um, and we will create a personalized uh, toolkit for you. Um, so, and one thing I did not mention is um, we offer a small stipend to folks who are interested in the toolkit um, and those who qualify for the stipend. But we also have toolkit for folks that don't qualify for the stipend. So keep letting me know if you want to be in the elections toolkit, um, part of that effort. Um, and a good date to put down on your calendar is that January 17th, we'll be hosting the election education toolkit where we're featuring our partner uh, YLI, and I thought she was on the call, but maybe not. Andrea, we'll, we will co-create a space where we'll go over toolkit materials, um, answer any questions. Oh, Andrea's on the call, awesome. Um, and she has offered very kindly to share all her wizard tech on how to create a a flyer on Canva. Um, Andrea is is somebody who works with youth uh, at the Youth Leadership Council. Is it council? I may have gotten your name wrong. Andrea, you can introduce yourself, but she knows a lot about what is young and hip. And so she'll be coming in and showing us a, a few of her tips and tricks that she's um, that she's implemented in the past for some elections. So if you're interested in learning any of that, January 17th, um, it'll be in the morning, 9.30 to 11, and it'll be a space like this, but more more focused on the actual materials and, and some tips and tricks and best practices um, to do outreach. Will there be a folder? Okay, I see. Uh, will there be a folder again for people to add materials, their orgs, and open to sharing? Yes, there's going to be a folder. You all have your own incredible materials please share them um, with me and I will add them to the folder. Um, and that link will also be in the follow-up. 
So I think I've covered everything. Is there any other questions about the toolkit, the training on January 17th? Um, all that information will be in the follow up to this to this meeting. Yeah, Heide, did you tell us like around when the toolkit will be done or will be ready? Yeah, it will. Be, I mean, obviously, it will be ready by January 17th. Um, you will all the goal is to get it to you before February 5th. So okay. the Thrive team will work very hard to get it all together. And the Thrive team, I mean, Petra and I <laughs> will assemble toolkits with the help of um, the materials from the elections office. And hopefully Diane can help us <laughs> as well. We'll create personalized toolkits that um, we can either hand deliver or you can pick up. Um, we haven't decided that, but before January, before your February 5th, you should all have the toolkits. Does that sound good? Any other questions? Um, will there be um, information on the proposition that's gonna be on March 5th in that toolkit? Do we expect that? Like, yes. Proposition um on the about proposition one yeah um that information usually comes from the secretary of state's office I don't think the elections office does anything specific so unfortunately the voters, oh yeah so so the the easy voter guide I'm assuming would have something about um, okay. proposition voters, one Betsy voters edge their website. Oh. Well, vote. So one thing that leads me to another thing: Voters Edge has gone away, has been replaced by four one one, a vote four one one, which is uh, similar to Voters Edge, but it's one that's used by the other other legal women voters outside of California. Um, so you can get information there about Proposition One, but um, I, it, there's nothing coming from the the San Mateo County Elections Office that I'm aware of. Okay, and nothing from Thrive either. And then, so then what about for when we, for February and for in November, do we expect Thrive to have like a, any kind of a voter guide then? Well, Sorry. Again, that's probably the 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 the, for, the vote 411 is, is basically what we've, and the, well, the, the, the thing with the League of Women Voters, they have this wonderful easy voters guide but it's my understanding, and Betsy, correct me if I'm wrong, they're not printing it anymore. It's just available online in English and Spanish. I think so, yeah. Which is which is a which is a bummer because it's a really great guide. So that might just be the source of information where you can just do a cut and paste because it's a very I mean it's very clear in terms of voting yes on this this proposition means this. Voting no means that. And I've used it a lot and it's it's really valuable. So um yeah, on everything's going online. <laughs> and and be, on behalf of Thrive, we don't do that kind of analysis. League of Women Voters does a terrific job, so we lean on them because they're very good at being nonpartisan and uh, just presenting uh, the facts. So we would just direct you to 411. Perfect. Thank you. That's the answer I was looking for. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Really great questions. Um, and we have about eight minutes left. Um, why don't we go with legislation updates? So I'm, I'm basically just gonna cover one because because it's good to have the folks from the elections office on on the call. So one, one of the um, things, legislation that was signed by the governor was uh, AB 1037. And it's it, what it does is it expands the way that when it, when someone mails in their ballot, if there's a signature verification, it gets kicked out because either the signature is missing or that doesn't match. Um, this allows voters another way to correct that that mistake by um, sending back the the com completed envelope statement or the signature verification statement electronically. The legislation doesn't go into a lot of how it's going to be done, so I don't know, Sarah, Chantel, uh, Jim's on the line, or or Thomas, how how the county is planning on doing that. Because it, it, I also couldn't quite figure out if when does it go into effect. So whether it would be in effect for the March primary. So um, anybody have any? Go ahead. Yeah, so I can I can answer that. Um, 
actually what we're going to be working on is with Democracy Live, we're going to have um, part of the cure letters that people will be receiving. So we are going to be outreaching to our voters where the, either they have a missing uh, signature or the signature does not match. And we're going to be reaching out uh, by any means possible, meaning we're going to be mailing the cure letters. Uh, we do call them cure letters because the purpose is to cure their ballot. Mm -hmm. So then the ballot actually is counted. Um, and we are going to be in that letter also where if if the voter um, has the email address in our system, then they will also be receiving an email with the link to either re, uh, return the form to a secure letter with the form. Which is usually, for example, if it's a missing a signature, that is the oath, the statement they need to uh, sign and return to us. But now they can actually go into the Democracy Live suit, and that is the system that we use for um, the EOCAVA and the RAVVM system. So it is under the same vendor. It is the same system. It is a very, very secure system. And they will have one individual link that will take them to their own form. They will fill out the form, and they can either print it and mail that, or they can actually send it to us via that same system just with a little click, and then we will receive that email with a curing process. So that is what San Mateo started uh, working on for this election that will go into effect for March 2024. Um, and so, yeah, that would be, that is actually something that we are currently working on to make sure the system is user-friendly and uh, our proofreaders will be proofing for all the translations that are going to be done in our four mandatory languages. As usual, San Mateo County was somewhat ahead of the curve on this and that, again, we were one of the first counties in the state uh, to provide ro remote accessible vote by mail. And Democracy Live is our vendor that put together that system. So uh, we're perfectly suited and set up uh, to utilize them for, for this particular purpose also. Okay. Um, that was probably the most important piece of legislation that I wanted to cover. Again, given given the time, we have five minutes. Um, does anyone have any announcements that they haven't already brought up about any voter outreach events that they're going to be holding, especially if they could use any assistance from other organizations? Just raise your hand and, and hopefully you hire can see. I, I can't see everybody on my screen at once, so... <laughs> Lydia, I see Lydia. Yeah, now that you uh, mentioned that, that's a question that I have from you. So um, in this case for Sara. So we have uh, some people that is interesting on kind of vo volunteer with us. I mean, as an organization, Seco Harvest to, uh, with our work that we're doing to uh, with voting outreach. So basically uh, we, uh, some people in, in, in an organization which are to our department asking us if we are, or we can connect these volunteers with the election office so they can come and volunteer on the table the events that they will be doing. Is something that, uh, yeah? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Please. Okay, then I'll, 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 I'll send you an email. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Also, and, uh, for just for everyone's awareness, if you right now this election, I think the complicated part about the primary is understanding the NPP voting and the crossover voting. So please do not hesitate to contact us if you need any information or any sort of explanation, just to make sure there's no misinformation uh, and the voters understand as best as possible. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think that's um, it for today's meeting. So our next meeting is January 17th. I'm not sure if it's going to be virtual or in person, uh, but if we don't talk to you before the end of the year, everyone have happy holidays, whichever holiday you're celebrating, happy new year, um, happy getting voters out to vote and getting more people registered. Um, thank you so much for, for everything you folks have done this year and years previous. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.